Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, and I'm now joined by Southern Illinois Saluki's running back and 2015 NFL draft prospect, Malcolm Agnew. I appreciate you joining the show, Malcolm. How's it going, man? Going pretty well. Thanks for having me, my man. Hey, the pleasure's all mine. So we're going to be talking about your college football career, and I want to, I want to start off by throwing out the fact that you actually – began your college football career at Oregon State. You played for the Beavers for two years in which you put up nearly 700 yards and six touchdowns. And it was actually uh, during your very first college football game as a true freshman against Sacramento State, you ran for 223 yards and three touchdowns. I got to say, that's one hell of a way to start off your uh, college football career, man. I, I got to think that's just one of those games that you're always going to remember. Am I wrong? Uh, yes, I will never forget that game. That was my very first college game. I still remember every single run from that game. You know, I wish we could have won the game back in that time, so I didn't enjoy it as much as I probably could have or should have, but no, I'll never forget that experience. Now, now, be honest, you know, this is your very first college football game. Did you expect to put up those type of numbers? I mean, over 200 yards, three uh, three touchdowns. Like you said, you guys lost the game, but did, did you expect to have that type of personal uh, performance? No, I definitely did not expect to have 223 yards and three touchdowns in my first game, let alone getting 33 carries. Like, that definitely took me by surprise, and I was extremely tired after the fact. But, like, it was a blast, man. I'll never forget that day. After two years of being at Oregon State, you decided to transfer to little old Southern Illinois, where your brother Ray was playing as the uh, team's fullback. I got to ask you, why did you decide to leave Oregon State, and how much of an impact did your brother have on you moving to uh, SIU? Well, when I decided to transfer, first off, there was you know, nowhere I was going to go besides SIU when I decided to transfer down a level because my brother was there. So as soon as I decided to transfer down a level, it was like, okay, I'm going to go to SIU with my brother. You know, I went to games all my life and, you know, saw the great teams of like 2007, 2008 play with Nick Hill and Larry Warren, who was actually running that coach now, which is crazy. And, you know, just seeing Ray play, there was no doubt I was going to go to uh, Southern Illinois. But, I mean, as far as me tra- deciding to transfer, um, honestly, it was just in guys' plans. I mean, it was a thing where, you know, a lot of things weren't really going the way they were, you know, supposed to or, you know, were supposed to be going. And a lot of things were, you know, going wrong and things were going up and down. You know, I just kept my head up and kept, you know, working through all the good and the bad. And, you know, Oregon State's a great, a great, great, you know, organization, a great family atmosphere type of team. You know, I wish them the best this year. You know, and I, you know, still listen to this day, but. You know, honestly, there's nothing better than me being here right now. This is definitely the place that God, you know, has plans for me to be, and I couldn't be more proud to be a Saluki. Well, Malcolm, last season was your first year as a Saluki, and you ran for 888 yards and six touchdowns. You also had 15 receptions for over 130 yards and a touchdown. You guys finished 7-5, and five, and there were so many games where you guys lost by a touchdown or lost by a field goal. I mean, you guys could have easily finished the season 10-3 and three or better. Uh, how would you describe the season yourself and your uh, teammates had last year? Last year, it was a roller coaster season, and that's what I literally called it the entire year. There were times that, man, look at the Salukis looking great. Like, oh, we're ready for a playoff run. And then there were other times, like, man, do we really, like, put lay an egg like that? It was definitely a roller coaster season. Um, I think the one thing I learned the most from that season last year was, you know, to really be a great teammate and never let my teammates down. Because there was a moment where we were losing to Missouri State, and it was looking like our playoff hopes were going to be, you know, pretty out of this and I remember on the sideline me and my brother were you know crying tears because he had never been in the playoffs you know the year they uh in 2009 he registered when the Salukis had a really good run but he had never physically played in the playoff game and you know I realized at that moment I never want to see any of my teammates have that hurt again let alone my older brother so I think that's what I learned the most from that year and it was definitely a roller coaster year 
All right, so that uh, roller coaster year is how you'll describe the 2013 season. The 2014 season, your senior year is kicked off, and last week, Malcolm, you and your teammates got off to a very hot start. You guys dominated Taylor University 45-0, to zero, and you personally had a huge impact on the game. Even though you only touched the ball eight times, you racked up 145 rushing yards, 62 receiving yards, and three total touchdowns. How important is it for you guys to translate uh, that, that success from uh, the week one game against Taylor University to this Saturday against Eastern Illinois, uh, knowing that it's going to be a much better and tougher opponent? Well, what we need to do as an offense and as just a team in general is to stay sharp and stay focused. You know, yeah, you know, we had a great game last, last week, but we had to put that behind us and really get focused on playing Eastern. And it's, you know, a much better team. They're a very physical team. They played Minnesota tough for about three quarters and, you know, really pushed them to the brink. So it's definitely going to be a challenge for our team. I think what we have to do as a team is stay sharp and stay in it. Because, you know, again, like last, like the 2013 season was, this game is going to be a roller coaster. There are going to be good moments. There are going to be bad moments. So we need to stay even keel and stay fighting to the end. Last season against Eastern, you guys came up just short, 37-40 to 40 in double overtime. Do you feel you guys uh, have something to prove this time around? I think what we want to do is, we. I mean, of course, you know, everyone wants to win the game, but I feel like we really want to play the best game we play. I think we want to continue just to sharpen the iron, sharpen the iron and sharpen the iron even more. You know, because what Coach Wynn has instilled in us is to make a statement, and by us getting better each and every game, that's the only way we're going to make a statement. So we're going to continue to just get better each and every day and try to be the best team we can be. Whoop. Well, the the, uh, the Eastern Illinois Panthers are definitely a different looking team. You know, uh, they, they lost their star quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, and wide receiver Eric Laura, but they still have a pretty solid and talented running back that I like a lot in Shepard Little. Uh, have you paid attention to Little at all, and uh, what are your thoughts on him as a, a running back? Oh, yeah. One thing I've always done in my career is always look at, you know, other running backs first off in the conference and then around, you know, the nation. And I've definitely looked at Shepard Little. He's definitely a guy that I, you know, I like his game. He's a shifty guy, you know, strong lower base, breaks a lot of tackles, and, you know, a deceptive burst. A lot of people don't realize how good his burst is. So, I mean, I'm excited, you know, to duel with him as, you know, running backs dueling against each other because he's a respectable player I really like. Chris Schaffel talking with Southern Illinois Salukis running back Malcolm Agnew. And Malcolm, whether it's from just this past week against Taylor University or all the way back uh, uh, as a freshman at Oregon State, what would you say is the biggest or most memorable, memorable play of your college football career thus far? The biggest and most memorable play of my college football career? That's a good question, Chris. Good question. Uh, let me think. I know there's so uh, many of them, man. I know there's so many. <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, uh, I would probably honestly have to say that the most number of play I had was, it was honestly with my brother against uh, Northern Iowa. Um, it was an overtime. It was the second play of overtime. Uh, we ran an option play, and my brother was lead blocking, and he cut. He had such a beautiful cut block that he cut three defenders, and I just really walked into the end zone. And that was most memorable because we ended up winning that game in overtime, and that was, you know, one of the first times we had beaten Northern Iowa at home in, like, literally, like, 20 or 30 years at uh, Northern Iowa's place. So that was really special. And the fact that, you know, it was my brother that really, you know, paved the way, and then I got to score a touchdown. I think that was special because both the Agnew brothers helped make it happen. Oh man, I, I gotta think that's just a great moment. I mean, not not too many people get to say they uh, they play on the same team as their brother, and uh, you know, of course, your brother has gone on to to great things, uh, making the fifty three man in uh, Cleveland. So that's that's definitely great to hear over there, uh, Malcolm. What do you feel are your biggest strengths as a running back? <laughs> My biggest strength. Oh, no doubt. I would always say my burst is my biggest strength. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one thing I've always been known for that will always continue to be, you know, a special part of my game is my burst. And that's something I take pride in. That's something I always continue to work on is my burst, burst, burst. The ability to get through the hole and make one cut and, you know, get to the second level. I think that's, you know, one thing that could help me separate myself from other running backs is my special burst. Is there one specific part of your game that you spent working on to get better at during the off season? Oh, no doubt my hands. That's something um, I struggled with early on in my career as a freshman and sophomore. I really feel like I improved as a junior. And so far as a senior, I really feel like that's something I put an emphasis on this off season. And so far, um, I haven't had a single drop in practice. So, I mean, that's just a testament to hard work that's, in, that's been put in. Chris Schaffel talking with Southern Illinois Salukis running back Malcolm Agnew. And Malcolm, just a few more questions, then I'll let you go. I really do appreciate your time, man. Uh, we mentioned the big game against Taylor University week one. You had over 200 uh, total yards. Uh, what exactly?
exactly are your expectations for this past season, personal expectations and team expectations? You know, I've been saying for a long this is going to be a special year. That's something I've just been about this entire year. I've just had a good feeling about this year in general for the Salukis and for myself. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a special year. You know, the work's been put in, you know, God is in control, and, you know, here we go. Absolutely, man. Now, uh, is there a certain running back currently playing in the NFL that you you would say that you mold your game after or you would compare yourself to? See, Chris, this is what I do. I like to take different pieces from different players and mold, like, the ultimate running back. So I would take Arian Foster's burst and his ability to run the zone, LaShawn McCoy's shakiness, and Adrian Peterson's power. So Adrian LaShawn... Uh, Peterson is the running back I want to be like. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that, man. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> and last but not least, Malcolm. I'm not thought about a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, now, last but not least, Malcolm, I mentioned in the opening of the interview that you are a 2015 NFL draft prospect. Any chance that you've heard from any NFL team scouts yet? And if so, what are they saying about you? Um, honestly, like, I really couldn't tell you anything. That's something I really haven't even been paying much attention to. You know, my dad, you know, who played in the NFL, he told me, like, you know, Michael, stay, stay focused on the season. You know, your goal is to win the championship. You know, anything later on will take care of us. So, honestly, that's just what I've been doing. I've been going about my work, trying to be a leader for this football team and make this football team better. And, you know, the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. All right, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Malcolm, we've been connected through Twitter for quite a while now. i got to say it's, it was a pleasure to finally speak with you, man. I'm wishing you nothing but the best this season. Uh, before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners? God bless and continue to work hard at whatever you do. There's always people competing out there for that same job you want or the same thing you want. Make sure you're working with everything. Sounds good. Malcolm, once again, congrats on a great start to the season. And uh, hopefully we can do this again later on down the line. All right, man? Sounds good. You take care, Chris. All right, take care, man. Thanks for tuning into the CS Podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Please check out all of my past interviews at www.youtube.com slash ChristianRE722. Once again, that's www.youtube.com slash ChristianRE722. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Chris Shanafelt.